Welcome to another episode of UCRD Reviews. So today we have a Gundam 0083 figure that I could have sworn would have been a P Bandai release, but this one's actually a regular release and is the uh, fourth in the GP series of mobile suits. So this is the RX 78 GPO 4G Gundam GPO 4G Gerbera version anime. This first appeared as a description in the 1 1 44th scale Gerbera Tetra model kit instruction booklet and was later seen as line art in the Gundam Weapons 3 uh, booklet that appeared later that year in 1992. Uh, it is also featured prominently in Gear and Greed and Encounters in Space video games and we actually got to see it animated in the UC Engage mobile game. It's an interesting design and one that actually has a figure. Um, it was made in the Gundam Fixed Figuration line and could also be made into the Gerbera Tetra Kai, which is also something that we'll see in the Robot Spirits line later on. So I was really excited when they announced this because that Gundam Fix figure is nice looking but is basically a statue. So I kind of wanted uh, something a little more poseable. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box here. So we got a nice little pose there. Great side profile of the GPO-4. We have some uh, weapons and features and then we have a nice uh, back of the box there with him fighting the GPO-3, oddly enough. Uh, so pretty cool. Let's go ahead and check this one out. All right, so here is the first GPO-4 figure in a very, very long time. So we have the head there. Looks pretty good. Not the greatest head sculpt on planet Earth, but, uh, you know, the details there. The paint looks nice, too. The eyes are colored in. Um, this antenna and the uh, V-fin have replacements, thankfully, in the box just in case. So the head will come down about that far. It'll come up quite a bit and it can turn around a full 360. So pretty good looking. We have a um, little bit of chest flex there. Arms will look like it'll come forward about that far. Um, torso will come forward an incredible amount. So you can see there's a lot of articulation there and it'll come back a decent amount before the backpack hits the rear skirt armor. I mean, the whole thing can just be, like, popped up. And the mine has the same problem that a lot of them have, where it has kind of a loose uh, torso. It can turn 360 degrees, but it is a bit wobbly, which is, which is unfortunate. We have ball-jointed skirt armor. We have some detail in there. We have a little stopper keep the skirt armor from going back even further. Uh, this is ball jointed, although it doesn't come out hardly at all. And the rear skirt armor is fixed. Back here in the rear, we have the connections for the stern boosters. We have four ball jointed thrusters that are effect part compatible. Some little details there, unpainted. And then we have these uh, beam saber racks that can move around and are multi hinged. And you have the uh, beam saber storage in there that I can't quite get out, but we'll do that later. So we have all of that with the arms. They'll come out about that far. You have the uh, big shoulder armor with thrusters that are effect part compatible and hinged, which is cool. Arms will go all the way around, as long as that's not in the way. You do have a joint up here that'll rotate 360. You have multi-jointed elbows that'll come up about that far. And you have a little bit of side-to-side -side in the elbow, very similar to the other GP series mobile suits. And then you have double ball-jointed hands. You also have shield connections on both arms. And for the legs, you have that version anime hip joint that comes forward. So we'll go ahead and do some knee articulation. It's decent. Not the greatest thing in the world, but it works pretty well. We have uh, no thigh swivel. Legs will come out about that far, 
Let's go ahead and push this joint back real quick. And we can move that out of the way. Yeah, still not much in terms of leg movement. And with the feet, it'll come down about that far. Up with toe articulation and quite a bit of side to side, which is typical of the GP series stuff. So, um, overall, it's pretty good. It's not groundbreaking by any means. Um, it looks really nice. There are some QC issues. Um, there's just something with the head. I think it's a bit too smushed looking, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I haven't looked at the line art in a while. So these are the stern boosters. So these just plug right in. So this is the... Oop, I'm not I'm not in camera. This is the bottom one. Just plugs in right back there. Super easy. And then you have these two for the sides. And they plug in pretty easily. So we don't have a um, Psycho Doga issue. And so I believe they go right like that. And they'll plug in on either side here. And you're met with a very large uh, booster unit, which is pretty cool. These uh, these leg thrusters also have, I don't know if that's a leg thruster, but that one is effect part compatible, as are the ones on the feet. And then, of course, you have your stand piece down there. I don't know if that's a thruster or not, but it looks like it's compatible with something. We'll look at it in a little bit. So this is the Gerbera with its loose torso. So let's check out what it actually comes with. All right, so we'll start off with everybody's favorite. We have the hand rack. We have gun hands, beam saber hands, and two different sets of posing hands. Interestingly enough, the bottom two fingers of this set of posing hands are a little bit different. You can see there. I don't know if that was intentional or if everybody's is like that or if that was just mine, but you get those hands. We have the beam sabers here, which are unusually small on the uh, Gerbera. I mean, they're, they're pretty short. We also have beam saber blades, which are in this lovely uh, piece of plastic. It's always, always great when they do this lazy, lazy plastic stuff instead of just putting it in the clamshell like you, normal. So I'll shove that under there. And so you get the two standard blades for these beam sabers. And they fit together just fine. And then the beam sabers themselves, let me grab the figure here. They'll plug in to the recharge racks that are back here, although that one just collapsed away. There we go. It plugs right in like that. So super easy. They are hinged, so you, you know when you're pressing down, uh, just be careful with them, but they'll they'll pop right back up. I had trouble with it earlier, but now it seems to work just fine. So we have those. We have the shield, which looks very similar to the GPO ones, although it has these uh, anti-beam uh, devices on there, very similar to the GM command, and it can collapse just like the GPO ones. You have the uh, fixed handle here. You have the EPAC storage rack right here, which can hold both of these extra E-packs for the beam rifle, like so. And then with the shield, you have the arm connection, the standard one that goes in here and goes under the arm and plugs in. And then you have this little tiny one that just goes straight into the arm via the peg. So, super cool. And it also says GP and everything as the graphics on the front, which is cool. And then lastly here we have the long range rifle, which is a basically a beam sniper rifle. Has a removable magazine, as you would expect since you get extras. And has a very interesting design. It is effect part compatible, which is cool. It has a rotating camera, which will go about that far to that side and then rotate all the way down here. Very nice detailing in the camera. You have a front handle that hinges side to side. Um, 
about that far on either side, you have a the actual trigger of the rifle, which hinges forward a little bit, and then you have this rear trigger that hinges almost all the way around. So it, it goes to there, and then it'll come back down to here, interestingly. Um, and it has this piece that's just molded uh, out like that. And uh, so you want to be careful with this, because there's no replacement for that. It has a cable on here, which is cool. Um, these uh, fins on the side. So everything looks neat. Um, we don't have the piece for the uh, little beam deflection that the other GP series beam rifles has. It, it's a part of the weapon. We just don't get the um, the piece for it. It's, it would be very long because this is the other side of the emitter and uh, that was kind of a missed opportunity since we did get it in the other releases. So that is it for accessories. We are missing a beam rifle which is unfortunate. The uh, GP04 has a regular beam rifle. We will see that beam rifle in the uh, GP, or not GP, the Gerbera Tetra Kai release. That is where the um, beam rifle will appear. We have a slashing beam saber effect. We have the either large beam saber or beam rifle firing effect. That's a two-parter. And we have two, looks like these are slanted thruster effects. Of course, you have to get them out of the plastic. And because they're covered in spikes, it's very difficult. So you get two of these. And uh, so, you know, pretty basic effect parts, nothing crazy. Um, these look nice, but, you know, this is all just basic 0083 stuff. So let's go into the uh, comparisons here. So here is the GP series of figures all laid out, or at least what we have so far. We have the GP01 Zephranthes, the GP01 Fulvernier, the GP02 Physalis, the GP03 Stamen, and the GP04 Gerbera. So you can see, obviously, the Fulvernier is going to be the tallest, and the uh, shades of white here all differ slightly. The GP03 is the brightest white. These two are kind of like an eggshell color, and then this one has a bit of a tint to it. And then there's the GPO2, which is a completely different color. But uh, very interesting designs on all of them. Um, this this one's my absolute favorite. If you pick up any of these, uh, pick up that one. The GPO2 figure's really great as well. So, uh, and the GPO1. You know what? Pick them all up. Have the whole team. Why not? But I wanted to show them all kind of at once here, um, just so you could see the difference. Oh, this isn't going to work very well. Okay, I got them out of there. This, these uh, wing binders make it difficult. So here's the uh, GP01 Zephranthes, the big giant GP01 Fulvernier. It's a really neat looking. And then the uh, GP03 with his bazooka, because he gets a bazooka, unlike all the others. And finally, the villain of the group, the uh, GP02. So very, very neat, very different designs. But now let's do one more comparison. So now we can look at the GP04 and the mobile suit it was actually turned into, the Gerbera Tetra. Now I attached the stern booster to the Gerbera Tetra so that you could see the design similarities between, oops, if we can keep everybody upright here, between the stern booster and the uh, coolant pods, or the um, fuel pods, I mean, and the stern boosters of the GP04. So it's almost like they just reversed the whole design and uh, obviously made it much, much more zeonic because aside from that, there's very, very few differences. You do have boosters in the shoulder. Obviously, these are way bigger. And that's about it. This is definitely a full Xeon Loyalist design where this is your typical Anaheim test 
Gundam. So very neat to see the two of them together. The GB04 is thankfully a regular release, which means the pre-order price came in at $50.46. It's worth it, however, it is not without fault. The loose torso is a common quality control issue. There is no beam rifle for this figure, just the long range rifle. The long range rifle is missing the beam jute and um, I don't know, there's something about that head sculpt that's not quite right to me. Maybe that's just me. Um, but other than that, everything else that the figure comes with is nice. I would have liked uh, maybe some better thruster effects than these really basic ones, but the fact that we got them at all sometimes is a, uh, is a blessing. These little uh, gray pieces up here on the legs, they are thrusters as well. I know I said earlier I would cover that. And here I am covering it. Um, paint is good. It's not uh, it's not the best that we've seen, but it's it's pretty well. It keeps the figure from looking completely plain, and the body sculpt is is really nice on it. Um, there's a lot of great detail that's in this figure, so uh, definitely worth picking up. Let me know in the comments if you got this one. If you're getting that Gerbera Tetra Kai, because I'm really excited about that one. Hopefully they don't they don't mess that one up. And uh, if you're going to get any of that cool Phantom Bullets stuff, because you know I am, and I'll be reviewing it. So soon we'll have another reunion of the GP series when the Blossom comes out. So be looking forward to that. And I will see y'all next time.